Device IDs for what is said to be upcoming APUs for Fifth and Ryzen chips have been confirmed along with details of what to expect on the CPU and GPU side and it turns out we're gonna see a mix of old and new. The most exciting news being SAN 3 where the disappointment lies on the graphic side where it seems like AMD is once again resurrecting Vega but it should be said guys we are looking at a redefined Vega with much better performance than before. For. Anyway, in today's video, we're gonna take a look at everything you need to know about AMD's upcoming 5th and Ryzen coming to both laptops and desktops. And these APUs, guys, can be a perfect match for any cheap gaming PC build. In this video, we're gonna cover specifications, release date, as well as performance. With that said, no time to waste. Let's jump right into it. Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome to Arbin Hardware. My name is Robin. I'm your Swedish host and friend with bad posture and poor accent. So I did a video on Ryzen 5000 codename CSAN a few weeks ago, but thanks to a few recent discoveries from two well-known Twitter leakers, I think it's time to do a 5th year Ryzen APU update. Now, are you excited for what these tiny, super efficient APUs are bringing in terms of gaming performance? Let me know in the comments what will be on top of your wish list. Uh, when it comes to these APUs, is it better CPU performance or do you want to see better graphics? I certainly would like to see these chips getting enough power to run, you know, very basic looking games at silky smooth FPS. This would essentially eliminate the need of a dedicated GPU in those scenarios where you want to play, you know, older or perhaps less demanding games, for example. Anyway, with that said, let's start with the architecture. Uh, based on recent leaks, it seems like AMD is using the up-and-coming SAN 3 on the processor side and despite the rumor of CSAN making the move to Navi it actually seems like Vega is once again being the target architecture on the graphic side which means at first glance the biggest difference between 4th and 5th gen APUs seems to be the move to SAN 3 it is a little bit disappointing that we not see Navi on the graphics side. Anyway, another awesome news is that, for what we can tell so far, it looks like uh, CSAN is staying on AM4, which in other words means that AMD will retain AM4 support till at least 2021, where we expect these APUs to come out. But yeah, basically, CSAN is replacing the current Renoir APUs 4000 APU family, which was introduced on laptops in April, and we are expecting to see these debut on desktop and the AM4 for socket in the coming months and in case you're thinking of you know buying or building a cheap gaming pc considering an apu let's say the upcoming 4700g can definitely be something worth considering i recently benchmarked the ryzen 4800hs in the sephiroth g14 from asus the same type of apu that soon will launch on desktop gotta be honest here i was actually quite stoked to see how well it handled games in case you're curious you'll find that video linked up down below but in case you're more interested in fourth and ryzen apus codename renoir you also find a video linked up down below that answer all you guys' questions anyway yesterday one of uh, twitter's biggest uh, leakers called komashi was able to confirm that the amd sysan apu will fall under the 1638 device id and there has been at least 13 PCIe IDs for this specific family spotted by another well-known leaker uh, known as Rogue Game. Maji also points out that CSAN APUs are still based on GFX9 architecture which means that we are once again going to see an enhanced version of Vega on the next gen APUs which obviously is very disappointing as there's been a few rumors suggesting Navi 23 being used here but that doesn't seem to be the case after all. With that said, let's look at the early specs that we got so far. And what's so exciting and what's so interesting is that CSAN APUs will feature a brand new CPU core, but again we are expecting to see an enhanced revision of an existing GPU core. So while we're not looking at RDNA or RDNA 2, and we won't see ray tracing, which is a bit unfortunate, we are still expecting plenty of power to possibly run less than money games with very good results. We have seen what Vega can accomplish before, so I don't think we should you know be too quick to judge it now as before as we've seen with Renault R we do believe that AMD will split CSAN in two segments for laptops at least we got the high performance segment these will be called CSAN H 
Now we got the low performance or low power CSAN U who targets ultra books. Let's talk performance. So it is a little bit too early for you know any actual benchmarks leaks, but based on recent SAN 3 rumors, we do expect to see a nice IPC gain uh, stand against SAN 2. But that being said, we don't expect to see you know as big of a jump as we saw between SAN Plus and SAN 2. But the leap is still going to be massive. And in case you're interested, I actually go over SAN 3 in much greater detail in my recent 4th gen Ryzen video. I'll link that video up down below. As for core count, we do expect AMD to concentrate more on IPC and core clock speed than core count this time around, which means that we might not see a huge increase of number of cores with SAN 3, but rather higher clock speeds. And as for the GPU side, we are looking at a Vega with uh, even more performance than what we've seen in the past. Previous reports said that the Cisani APUs will be fabricated on the TSMC's uh, N7 process node. Now, we don't know where this is uh, confirmed or not. We do expect to see plenty of performance and there is simply no question about it. And as for release date, well, it has been reported that AMD Cisani Ryzen 5000 APUs lineup is expected to hit the market by 2020. 21. We do expect to see an announcement at CES in Las Vegas with a launch planned around Computex in 2021 and Computex usually takes place around May, so right before the summer kicks in basically. And there is also reports guys that the Cezanne APUs will be coming to the AIM4 platform which means that the socket, AIM4 socket will last until 2021 and we can then expect AMD to upgrade to AIM5 by around 2022. So as for compatibility if you got a B550 or an X570, you should be safe here. It does remain to be seen if a B550 or X570 sorry, 470 will be supported as AMD only promised uh, support for AIM4 through 2020, I think. Yeah, anyway, time will tell. Let me know in the comments. Are you excited for these new upcoming APUs? In the meantime, watch either of these two videos to learn more and I will see you guys in the next video.